Can you explain exactly how this technology works and who your target customers are? Sure, um, let me put this in context. What we're doing here is we're imagine a group of, a large group of people with issues that you're worried about specific to risk. So what we're able to do is work with our customers to derive specific questions. We automate those questions. We have a globally networked platform that delivers these automated interviews. Individuals take these interviews over the telephone from anywhere in the world in any language. It takes about 10 minutes and we process those results against our algorithm producing a risk report. So we're essentially delivering risk assessment as a service. So you're saying that based on the way I talk, my intonation, sound inflection, that you can figure out if I'm a risk or not? I mean, how accurate is this? Right, so what we're looking at is very specific but subtle changes in the voice that we're able to read very accurately. And we're not looking at what you say, we're just looking at yes and no responses. And those responses are what we measure producing that report. Think of like a blood pressure reading from, from low to high. We're measuring those responses from, from low to high and essentially triaging risk on that spectrum for our customers. And how does this differ from a traditional polygraph or lie detector? Yeah, sure. So we exist way out in the front of the ecosystem of risk. So where there's a lot of people and you just need to triage and identify where to start. It's the concept of data being fed to experts, human machine teaming, the ability to have data to then use that to do that credibility assessment. So we exist on the very front end of the spectrum, identifying risk, providing indications and warning of risk. The person at the end, the lie detection will happen, the expertise, the tradecraft of professionals, fraud detectors or in the military, counterintelligence professionals, they'll do that back end work with polygraph and other technologies. We're on the very front end of just doing the risk identification. I see, so now I'd love to get an example of a real world situation where it's been applied. In particular, sure. this fascinating case in the Philippines where apparently your tech helped identify employees behind this $15 million fraud. Sure, so wherever there's human risk involved, that's where we like to play, specifically with identifying. In this case, in the Philippines, they had a problem across thousands of miles of supply chain identifying who was involved in the theft of, of oil. We were able to go in, screen a large volume of people, and identify where there might be risk present that was unknown to the customer before. The lead investigator was able to zero in and get a confession and essentially find where that fraud was happening. So the idea of that data coming very quickly to the expert to make a determination of where that was happening, and that was just just one case of, of many that we have that's really exciting. So intellectual property protection is another big concern of companies. Has your technology been able to help on that front in terms of screening individuals who might be at risk of committing those types of actions? Sure, so we spent the bulk of our time getting validation in the market, specifically where we come from in the special operations world, and now we're at that inflection point to go into market, and it is something very exciting to be able to know that we can go and help in that IP protection space, um, counter fraud, and so on. Um, these are kind of where we're headed next. Um, where we're at now is, is in the market commercially with some really exciting users who are using for applicant screening, fraud protection, investigations, due diligence, and in the government space in the special operations world helping feed data to experts to make better decisions in places like Afghanistan. Now, what about... Well, first, I want to hear, what are you doing in Afghanistan right now? Yes, we have really exciting um, you know, multi-phase pilot with uh, an innovations group from U.S. Special Operations Command called Softworks, sponsored by the Doolittle Institute. Spent a lot of time validating our technology, because when people hear about this, the biggest issue that they have is incredulity. How does this work? How can I believe it? Spent a lot of time focusing on getting that believability, rendering our technology with greater than 97% accuracy, no false negatives. And again, we're playing, it's important to say, we're playing in a context where risk exists holistically multiple data points feeding a human being who, who leverage, levies uh, judgment, right? So machine is doing the data and the prediction. Uh, human judgment, right, is doing then that, that feeding into the decision. That's what we're doing in Afghanistan right now and, and places like Uganda doing counter poaching and counter threat financing work for the Ugandan Wildlife Authority. A lot of really cool examples in, in austere f rural environments where there is no other data to help drive and increase security and safety. What are some potential ways that your technology could help solve this intractable immigration issue in our country. Are you working with, for instance, immigrations and customs enforcement right now? So I, I think we'd be a, a large part of that, that solution. And again, it's got to be holistic. It's got to be multi-layered. And if you remove the political charge from the issue, you know, what you have here is you have a country of, of, of immigrants that needs good, robust
robust legal immigration to continue to prosper. We also have an increased uh, security threat. So there's a tension, and there's individuals on both ends of this side of this uh, equation. Where we would come into play is screening people very quickly, non-invasively, without bias, allowing them to accelerate through a process. Then identifying a small portion of that population who present risk for those experts to make a determination. Again, using human judgment, moral morality, values, law to make a decision on if this individual does in fact pose a risk. So that's where we'd play on this immigration issue. The, ad the idea is bridging the, bridging the trust gap, accelerating trust, and building secure bridges that are connecting people in this time of uncertainty. And now we're at a time when tech companies are being scrutinized more and more for any potential weaponization of their technology. Sure. I'm sure you've been following Google coming sure. under fire for the Project Maven. You have sure. Amazon with its facial recognition being used in police forces. Yeah. Where do you stand on all of this? Sure. So we, we stand in. We have no PII associated with any of our of any of our technology. How we out how we roll this out and are used by our customers. Effectively, we are using this as a force for impact and for good to increase in the trust sharing economy. Right where things are outpacing frequency of interactions and relationships. There's a gap between trust and the pace of that technology. We want to help accelerate and continue to accelerate that by bridging that trust gap. So that essentially is weaponizing this for a force of good, getting people jobs who wouldn't otherwise be able to have jobs because they look a certain way or from a certain region, identifying risk where it would have otherwise gone unnoticed. So in this case, what we're doing is aligning with our customers the value prop of we can all hold hands and agree that these things are bad, and let's come together and get data to inform better decision making to scale your business, enter new emerging markets, and really be a force for good. You were in the military for yeah. almost a decade. You have Robert Gates, Condoleezza Rice as advisors. When you look at where this technology is going and all of the potential applications and ways for tech firms to make money, what's your number one concern? My number one concern is impact. We have to be able to, to take this new technology, and again, this is something new. We're talking about an innovation of the voice. It's never been done before, and we're not iterating on the candlestick to get the light bulb. This is something brand new. How we apply it is going to be very important, both in the government sector to move the needle on immigration and national security, in the business sector to move the needle on fraud, applicant screening, IP protection, and in the social space, how people can get jobs and move without, you know, without traditional forms of, of security, passports, et cetera. So our number one goal and how we think about everything is with respect respect to our impact and how that impact can be driven through with this with this new innovation that again is used holistically and in an integrated fashion with other technologies. Now you also work with big tech companies like Facebook, Apple, Palantir. What do you do for them? Right, so we help a lot of companies screen people that are in the security space for them. So individuals that are in high visibility situations, um, we help screen those people for risk to ensure security and safety across the enterprise from a security standpoint.